yeah, I'm officially on a book buying ban now. Hello beautiful people, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel if you guys are new here. My name is Gianna Leon, and today I have a humongous book haul for you guys. Yeah, I'm officially on a book buying ban now. I've confirmed it. I don't know how long, but I've just been buying way too many books recently and it's just hurting my bank account. So we're going on a book buying ban, but here is our lovely stack of books. We have a lot. Yes, I know. These books are kind of just a big collective haul because I did have a whole book shopping video for you guys, but my footage got deleted. So we have lots of books to show and a lot of these are summer books. So perfect for the vibes. But the first one I want to start off with is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. You guys know from watching my other videos how much I absolutely love Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I'm just obsessed with her writing. Everything about her, I just absolutely love. So I knew I had to pick up her new release. I'm a little bit late to the trend, but I'm just happy I picked it up before summer ended. I'm pretty sure this one is also like a second chance romance similar to Every Summer After, but it says, you and me in one year, don't let me down. Oh my gosh, and I also think that this is based like in Toronto because it says that they spiraled into a day-long adventure in Toronto and then years later our main character is running her mother's Muskoka Lakeside Resort. That's gonna be so exciting. I feel like I haven't read like a summary book based in Toronto, like basically where I live. So that's super, super cool. I don't really know too much other than that. And I kind of just want to leave it like that. But I also think that this is also then and now perspectives, which I love that. So I was super, super excited for this and it will be perfect for summer. Next we have Same Time Next Summer by, let me just take the sticker off, by Annabelle Monaghan. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, I probably am, but I saw this one at the bookstore. I didn't know anything about it. I just really, really liked the cover and it obviously it gives the summer beachy vibes. I really wanted it, plus it's a shorter read, so I feel like it'd be perfect just to read it on the beach and I could read it in like one sitting. But this one, I'll read you the part that intrigued me the most and this is all I read from the back. It just says, beach rules. Do take long walks on the sand. Do put an umbrella in every cocktail. Do not run into your first love. So it seems like we have like a whole bunch of like love chaos going on. It says, Sam's life is on track. She has the perfect doctor fiance, Jack, a great job in Manhattan, unless they fire her, and is about to tour a wedding venue near her family's Long Island beach house. Everything should go to plan, yet the minute she arrives, Sam senses something is off. Wyatt is here, but there's no reason for a 30 year old engaged woman to feel panicked around the guy who broke her heart when she was 16, right? So that drew me in and I just needed to read this book. So I had to pick this up by the synopsis and I'm pretty sure it is a newer release as well. So that's always good. This one, you guys already know, I just had to. There was no question about it. I just had to buy it as soon as I finished the last one. We have Twisted Hate by Anna Huang. This is the third book in the Twisted series. I swear the covers just keep getting prettier and prettier. I'm pretty sure the last one is green though. I don't know how I feel about green, but <laughs> I'm super excited for this one because the second book probably is my favorite, the one that I just finished. So I'm curious to see if this one's gonna top it, but all of them have been so good so far. And I'm pretty sure that this one follows Josh and Jules. Josh is Ava's brother from the first book and Jules is Ava's best friend. I got to know them a lot in the first book and I didn't really vibe with their characters. I wasn't really drawn to them, especially the brother, but I feel like in their own book we could really really get to know them and I feel like I could like it, but I hear that this one is also everyone's favorite, so I'm curious to see if I have the same opinions, but so far the second one has to be my favorite. They're just so good. I highly highly recommend this whole series. Next, I picked up Colleen Hoover's newer release. It's called Too Late by Colleen Hoover, obviously. I love this cover. It's like iridescent, like reflective almost. It drew me in. Plus I read the back and it seems like it's something that I absolutely love to read about. I'm pretty sure it is more of like an abusive relationship situation. And I don't know why, but I'm drawn towards those books because I just like to see the psychological thinking behind it and like what leads people to like act the way they do. I think that's why I'm drawn to these books so much. But it says a psychological suspense novel of obsession and dangerous love. And I also think I was just drawn into this book because I feel like from the synopsis, it sounds like it's something so different than what I would expect from Colleen Hoover, like from her other books and stuff. I wouldn't expect her to like write a psychological like thriller romance almost. So I was just curious to see like how she's going to write a book like this and see if I really like it because I do enjoy her writing and they're super fast paced. I just had to add it to the Colleen Hoover collection and you guys are going to realize that we do have some Colleen Hoover going on in this haul. 
This book I have wanted for so long, ever since I saw it scrolling through Goodreads. I'm obsessed with this and I wanted to wait for it to come out in paperback, but I just couldn't. I couldn't hold off any longer and I just really, really wanted it. So I got The Half of It by Madison Beer. This is her memoir. This cover is just so breathtaking. Probably maybe in my top favorite covers I've ever owned. Look at the back. Oh my gosh, I'm just so obsessed with it. It's super short too. If you guys watch my other videos, you guys know I'm on like a memoir kick right now. I don't really know what it is all about, but I'm loving memoirs recently. And this one I just knew I had to get. Plus I love Madison Beer. I've followed her on social media for so long and like her journey and stuff like that. So I'm curious to see a whole different side of her when she writes her story. This one's described as a memoir from singer songwriter Madison Beer chronicling the past decade of her life spent in the spotlight, the ups, the downs and the in-betweens that you won't see on social media. So I'm excited to see everything that she didn't show on social media and everything that she was struggling with or accomplishing that she didn't share to social media. I love that. It kind of reminds me of I'm Glad My Mom Died because I grew up watching Jeanette and I didn't even know that with everything in her family that was going on because not everything is broadcasted on social media. So this one is gonna be so good. It's definitely an anticipated five-star read for me. <laughs> then you guys, you're gonna laugh at me when I show you this, but I ended up picking up the duet. It ends with us and it starts with us. Yeah, I'm finally gonna do it. I promised myself that I was not gonna read these because of how hyped they are on TikTok and I feel like I already know everything that goes on in these books because of how much I've seen on social media for them. But I do kind of want to do a reading vlog on them and my mom did pick this one up from Michigan and she didn't know it was the second one. So I picked up this one and I feel like I just need to read the duet. So I'm finally gonna do it. I might do a reading vlog on this. Let me know down below if you guys would be interested in a reading vlog. I feel like it could be fun even though I'm very very late to the trend which kind of sucks But I feel like it could be really good Like even if I know a lot about the book already and a lot of the details that go into the book I feel like I could still really enjoy them because this one I am pretty intrigued in and then I would love to see how this story carries through But it says sometimes the one who loves you is the one who hurts you the most which is such a powerful quote I love that quote excited to maybe pick these up sometime soon Hopefully I'll see what all the hype is about even though I probably promised myself I would not read these. <laughs> But also more books to add to my Colleen Hoover collection. It's growing so much recently. I honestly don't even know why, but I'm not mad about it. Next is a more random pickup. I've seen this book for a while. I've had my eye on it. I just never really wanted to really, really pick it up, but I decided to just pick it up on a whim one day. Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez. This cover is so gorgeous. I just love it. I don't know what it is about it, but I just love this cover so much. And I'm pretty sure this one also is based in Scarborough, which I don't live too far from Scarborough. And I know the area pretty well, so I would love to see like the truths and what really goes down in a smaller community with like poverty, drug abuse, like everything like that. I feel like I could learn so much from it, so I wanted to pick it up. It does say that Scarborough is a low-income, culturally diverse neighborhood east of Toronto. Like many inner city communities, it suffers under the weight of poverty, drugs, crime, and urban and blight. Scarborough, the novel, employs a multitude of voices to tell the story of a tight-knit neighborhood under fire, offering a raw yet empathetic glimpse into a troubled community, a neighborhood that refuses to be undone. So it seems like we're gonna have a lot of character development in this book, a lot of growth in this book, and just a lot of real life facts and real life truths that is really going to make me see another side of some things. I feel like that could be so inspiring in a way. I don't know why, but it's also really, really short, so I feel like I could fly through it pretty quickly. This one will definitely be a next read for sure. And then the last three books that I hear, I actually were gifted these by my best friend Lily from London. I absolutely love her. She always spoils me with books, so I had to include these into a haul, but give her a big thank you really quickly because I love her so much. Also, don't don't mind my nails. I need them done. I just realized I don't have some nails going on, so don't mind that. The first book she got me was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. She has been telling me to read this for so long. She's like, you need to read this book. You need to read this book. You need to read this book. And really the only way she gets me to read books that she wants me to read is she just buys them for me. <laughs> It's her way of forcing me to read books. We all know this book, probably. I mean, I would assume we do. It literally blew up TikTok. It's also a very controversial book. It's very hit or miss. Like some people absolutely love it. And then other people say that it's the worst book book talk could ever make popular and make go viral. So I don't know where I'm gonna stand. It's a lot shorter than I thought it was when I was looking at it before. 
I am excited to read it because then I could pick up the second one. Plus, with the summery vibes, I feel like it could be perfect. And it would be maybe a good beach read for the future. But the little blurb on the back, it's all it gives you is, we are liars, we are beautiful and privileged, we are cracked and broken. A tale of love and romance, a tale of tragedy. Which are lies, which is truth, you decide. Oh my gosh, I'm just so excited. Next one she also literally tells me I have to read is There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark. This is actually a duet, but she got me the first book to see if I liked it. And this one she recommended to me because I am obsessed with the Mindfuck series. You guys might know that about me. I'm obsessed with it. I fell in love with the series from book one and she's like, oh my gosh, you have to read this duet then because it's not completely similar, but it does kind of have some similarities. So she recommended me this. I love the cover. I know the Kindle Unlimited cover is like, terrible. <laughs> it's like real people on it. So I'm really happy that I got this cover. It's just so gorgeous. I don't really know what this one is about though, to be honest, but it says Cole Blackwell values control. He's the hottest sculptor in San Francisco, wealthy, successful, and respected. His only weakness is the dark impulse he carefully conceals. Mara Eldridge is a nobody, broken damage. She works three jobs while creating paintings no one will ever see. So seems like we've got a lot of opposites to track going on. And I really hope it's like bad boy romance. I've been loving that trope recently so well, let's only hope but I was super excited when I opened this from her when she sent it to me it was just a nice surprise plus I've just been wanting to read it for so long and then if I do really like it I'm gonna have to pick up the second book we're just gonna have to see how it goes I feel like I've bought so many books recently that I'm overwhelmed with the fact that I literally have no more space on my bookshelf but that's a problem for another time <laughs> And the last one I want to show you guys, she did get me the like limited edition anniversary cover, I'm pretty sure, of The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I saw this last summer when they first released these and I just fell in love with it. Plus this book is one of the first books that I read when I first got into reading again. So I just knew that I really, really wanted this cover. I just didn't know when I wanted to pick it up, but she beat me to it and she ended up getting it for me. It's just so gorgeous. And plus I hate hardback covers. You guys know that, but this one, is an exception because it's just so gorgeous and it says people have so closely followed the most intricate details of the fake story of my life i want them to know the real story the real me that is like the perfect synopsis just at the back that's all you need for this book and then you just have to read it because i'm telling you this book is so beautiful and so moving i don't know what it is about it but i don't like historical romance like historical fiction but this one is a must i'm telling you oh, i'm just so in love with this cover it's just so gorgeous but these are all the books for my massive book haul. I am officially on a book buying ban. I don't know how long that's gonna last. Every single time I do put myself on a book buying ban, it never ends up working out very well. But we're actually gonna try now because I do now officially have over 70 books on my physical TBR currently. So I need to get through those before I keep buying more books. And let me know if you guys want an updated physical TBR video because it's grown and changed a lot since the last time I uploaded that video. So. Let me know if you guys want that. Other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's book haul. I picked up so many new good reads, summer reads too, that I'm so excited to dive into. If you guys did, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff you guys know how to do. And with that, I hope you guys are having an amazing, wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Mona, Monaghan? Monaghan? Do not take, do not take, do not, um, I feel like I, I, Hello? Don't fall, don't fall, please don't fall. What is going on here? Really, the one book wants to be the opposite way. Seriously. Ah, okay, do a little flipperoonie. Oh no, you stay right there.